Hello and welcome. My name is Cleveland, and today I will be demonstrating a Max patch. Uh, it was basically created to serve as an audio engine for an open source version of Space Invaders. And first off, uh, this was my final project for my game audio class at Expression College for Digital Arts. And although it's called game audio, the real purpose of the class and the project was to get an understanding of interactive and adaptive audio. Uh, we took a look at middleware like FMOD, WISE, and we even got a little bit into the Unreal Editor. Um, basically what we learned was the strengths of all this middleware, um, but also the limita limitations. Uh, and we took that into consideration when building our own audio engine uh, in Max MSP from scratch. Uh, so the first thing I'll say about this project is I, I kind of dreamed of creating a super elaborate dynamic audio engine, whatever that might mean to you. Um, something that was technically possible, but would prove as a, as a really big challenge for me, um, trying to practically create, you know, this thing in Max MSP. Um, the, the great thing about setting such a high bar for myself was that it forced me to learn all these different objects and actually learn how Max MSP functions. Um, and basically I had to learn how to get to where I wanted to go. So without talking too much more, I'll play a level or two, um, of Space Invaders so I can demonstrate everything that I implemented. guys. Okay, uh, so now you got a little little taste of, of my engine, my audio engine, essentially. Um, I guess the best place now is to go ahead and start going through it and kind of explaining, uh, you know, what I did to implement these sounds. Um, first off, let me drag this in. This is another patch, um, basically called Unity to Max. Uh, this was created by my instructors in my class. Um, 
basically to grab data from the audio engine, or excuse me, from the uh, from Unity, which is the game engine, um, and grab grab that data and somehow turn it into something that Max can use. So as you can see, there's a score, the fire, uh, you know, the Y and, and X axes of uh, the invaders, and basically it's just you know setting a bunch of data. Um, so that data is coming into Max, and we're using that. Um, as you can see here, uh, we have all of these parameters uh, receiving from the game. Um, by the way, the game Space Invaders, uh, thanks to Eric from the Unity, uh, Unity forums, I absolutely don't know anything about Unity besides the fact that I'm using it to uh, run Space Invaders, this version of it. Um, so let me go ahead and move this guy over. And we'll start here with the fire module. Um, basically what I did here uh, is I just created a synthesizer, um, very basic. Uh, basically when it receives that input, um, that message, which is to fire, whenever the player fires, um, it plays this uh, synthesized sound. It actually plays both of those together. Um, and basically, you know, with the whole dynamic music thing, um, you know, my goal was to kind of create everything that was musically cohesive. So I made sure that all of these, you know, the frequencies um, that I was, I was giving it uh, would kind of be cohesive as far as, uh, you know, the, the background music and the dynamic music and everything I was going to implement. Um, so these are all in the, in the same key. Um, and then I, I put a little phase shifter just to kind of give it, you know, different, a different sound every time you shoot. Um, there we go. Uh, next module is uh, the UFO that comes across the screen. Um, it's, it's very, very subtle, but, um, you know, hopefully that kind of created a sense of, of, you know, the dynamic music, which was my, my main goal was to have a sense of, you know, that the player was actually, actually doing, doing something to, to make this music change. Um, so basically when the UFO comes across the screen, um, it's, it's gonna scale those, those numbers that are coming in. Uh, so for example, when it comes in from the left side, that number on the left side of the screen is gonna be negative 30, while on the very right side, it's gonna be about 90. Um, so I, I scaled that so that when, uh, basically when it comes across the screen, a certain sample is gonna be played. Um, and it's gonna get louder as it goes from one side of the screen to the other. So if I go ahead and play that, and bring this up, you can see it's only coming in the left side but that's because we don't have any parameters. The UFO actually isn't moving right now. But if it was moving to the right side of the screen, it would be panning because I got this uh, little pan object right here. So that was one way to kind of create a little different, uh, different way of, of having you know, a UFO sound. I didn't want just you know, a plain UFO sound. I wanted to, when the player hears that, that music, that chime or whatever you want to call it, um, you know, they know that the UFO is coming across the screen.